In this video, we're going to look at the common principles that underlie how the performance of digital adders is generally improved. So to start off with, we want to look at what is the performance of kind of the simplest digital adder that we can have. And so shown here is a ripple carry adder where basically we have a bunch of adders for single bits and we take the carry out from one bit and feed it into the carry in of the next bit and we do this through all of the bits. And so in this particular example, we're showing a case with 32 bits and for the signal, we basically have to have the carry propagate from this input through the first adder, through the second adder, it goes through all the adders, keeps going through the 30th bit, and then finally the very last bit, and then finally the carry out can come out. And so for a ripple carry adder, the delay is proportional to, in this case, if we have 32 bits, so it's the number of bits times whatever the delay of a full adder is. And so more generically, if you have n bits, then the delay would be proportional to n times the delay of the full adder. And generally speaking, this is a pretty long delay. Most computers are adding either 32 or even these days 64 bits. And the delay of a full adder is at least two or three logic gates. And so if we put all this together, this is a lot of logic gates and would really restrict the performance of many circuits. And so we're interested in what kind of ideas can we use to improve the performance of adders? And so to kind of help us think about this, we'd like to see what kind of computation that we can do in parallel. So right now our limitation is the fact that we have to wait for the carry to propagate through all of these adders. And so we're interested, can we kind of pre-compute some information that would allow us to speed up the performance? And so to get us started, we're going to look at the case of if we just have any random two bits that we're adding somewhere in this sequence, what can we tell about the carry out of this bit, bit position based off of just these two bits? So we're not, don't know anything about the carry in. So in the first case here on the left, we have two ones, one in each position. And so we could say for sure in this case, we're definitely going to have a carry out regardless of what the carry in is going to be. So we can say for sure that the carry out of this position is definitely going to be a one. And this is commonly referred to saying is whatever bit position we are. So if we're in the ith bit position, we're gonna say this position generates a one. So to generate means that we're going to produce a carry out regardless of the carry in. And so we know, or we can say, regardless of what's coming into us, we know for sure that we're going to have a carry out. So that's this first case. We're going to next look at the next two cases, which are basically the same thing. It just one of them has the one bit in the first input and the other one has it in the second input. And so the question here is, what can we say about the carry out? And so in this case, we can't say that it carries out for sure. It really depends on what the carry in is. So in this case, the carry out depends on what the carry in is. And so one way this is referred to or is the common way this is referred to is to say that this propagates a carry. So if there's a carry in, then it will continue to propagate this carry out. And so for this ith position, we would say that this bit's position propagates a carry. So to propagate means to produce a carry out if there is a carry in. And so we can also say for this second case here, this would also carry out if there's a carry in and so the propagate for this would also be a one and if we wanted to we could also go back and look at our first case and say well while we know it's definitely going to have a carry coming out we could also consider if there's a carry coming in it would also have a carry coming out so we could also say that this position would also propagate a carry and then finally if we look at the last case where we have zeros in both positions in this case, we can say we know for sure that there's going to be no carry out because even if we have a carry in, we're only adding one or we only have one, so we're not going to carry anything out. So in this case, we can say with certainty that the carry out is going to be zero. And so in the case of a single bit, so for a single bit, we can say that we're going to generate a carry if both positions are one. So if the inputs A and B are both one, then we're definitely going to generate. And if either of them is a one, so if A or B is a one, then we are going to propagate and otherwise we're not going to generate or propagate. So that's for a single bit. Now we want to look at, well, how do we, how can we expand this idea to more bits? So here we're going to start off with a case where we've got different combinations of two bits. 
So here we're going to refer to these, or I'm going to refer to these as the i-th bits and the j-th bits. So the i is the more significant of them. And we're interested in under what conditions can we, or what can we say about the carryout? So under what conditions can we say there is a carryout for sure? And under what conditions can we say there would be a carryout if there's a carry in? So in this first case here, we have a one in both inputs for the most significant bit. So regardless of what the other bit is, we can say for sure that we're going to have a carry out. So we can say that the carry out for this range of i through j is definitely going to be a one. And we could also say that, well, we know that the most significant bits are one or are both one. So we could say that the ith position is a generate or would generate a carry. And so as a whole, we could say that this range from i to j is going to generate a carry. Now we're going to look at the next case. So in the next case, one of the inputs has a one in both positions and the other has a zero in the most significant and a one in the least significant. And so if we were to look at this, what we could say one plus one is definitely going to have a carry come over here. And so then we would definitely have a carry out. So we could say that the carry out for this range is going to be a one as well. And now we're interested in what combination of conditions led to this carry out. So if we look at this, we can say that for the i position, it was propagating. So it had a single one, so it would propagate a carry if a carry came in, which in this case it did. And we could say that in the j position, it was generating a carry. So they were both one, so we knew it was producing a carry regardless of what was coming in. And so because of this, we could say that for the total range of i through j, that this total range is going to definitely produce a carry out. So even though the most significant bit might not have an isolation, we can say, because we know both of these bits are, we can say that it's definitely going to generate a carry. And then if we keep going on, so in the next case, we've got a one in each of the two different bit positions. We're looking at a one, one in each of the two bit positions we're looking at. And so without any inf information about the carry in, we can't say for sure that we're going to generate, but we could say that if there's a carry in, so if there's a carry in here, then there would be a carry into the next position, which would cause a carry out. So we can say over this range, the i through j will have a carry out if there is a carry in to the, j, the jth position. And so what conditions cause this to happen? Well, we can see that both the i th position and the j th position were both propagating. They both had one one. So that meant if we had a carry in, we'd have a carry out. And so we can say as a whole, this range i through j would propagate a carry if there is a carry in, but or it would not generate a carry because whether it would have a carry out would depend on what the input is. Now we can go for the next case. And in this case, we have zeros in both of the most significant bits. And so in this case, no matter what the carry in is or what the other two least significant bits are, we're definitely not going to have a carry out because at best we could maybe have a carry coming in here, but that would not produce a carry out because we've only got a single one. So in this case, we can say that the carry out from the i through j position is going to be zero. And we can say this because the i position is not generating carry and it's also not propagating a carry. And then finally, in this last case, we've got a single one in the most significant bit. So we could say that the i position is propagating. But given what else we know, we would not expect there to be any carry out because the zero zero is not going to have any carry. So we're essentially gonna have a zero here. So we're adding just, we just have a single one. So we're not gonna have any carry out. So over this entire range of i through j, we're not going to have a carry out. And we could say, well, that even though we had a propagate in the most significant bit, our j position had a, was not generating and was also not propagating. And so now if we want to go summarize, how can we calculate or determine the generate and propagate bits as a whole? So these are the two cases when we generated a carry. And so here we could say that for i through j as a whole, we're going to generate a carry if either the most significant bit generates a carry or the most significant bit propagates a carry and the least significant bit generates a carry. And then looking at this example here, we can say we're going to propagate a carry if both the i-th position and the j-th position are propagating a carry. 
So that's for two bits. Now we'd like to try to generalize this even on one step further. And so here I've, I've kind of shown the cases that in the two bit case, we're either generating a propagating one, but I've made them a little bit more generic. So in the first case on the left, I'm saying over some range of I through K bits, those bits are going to generate a carry. So it could be these are two bits like we looked at above and these two bits are generating a carry or it could be one bit, two bits, three bits, however many bits you want. Or just, we just know that over this bit range, I through K, it's definitely generating a carry. And then in this particular case, we don't really care what the other K minus one through J bits are doing because if the more significant bits are carrying, then we can definitely say over the entire range, so over the range I through J, we're definitely going to have a carry out because the more significant bits were generating a carry. So we'll have a carry out of one if the generate for the most significant bit is equal to one. So that's one case. Now in the second case, we've got where the most significant bits I through K are propagating a one and the least significant bits within a range K minus one to J are generating. So in this case, this is kind of similar to the second case we had above. We can say we can have a carry out for the entire range if the first set of bits or the more significant bits are propagating and if the lower bits are generating a carry. And then finally, if we go to the third example we're showing, in this case, we don't know that anything is generating. They're both just propagating over this range. And so we can't say that we're generating anything, but we can say that the carry out over this range will equal whatever the carry in is. So if there's a carry in, we'd have a carry out. And this is true if both of these ranges are propagating. And so if we wanted to, similar to before, kind of create these into more generic equations, we could say that, well, these are the two cases where we're going to generate a carry. So over the range I through J, if the most significant set of bits, so I through K is generating, or the most significant set of bits I through K is propagating and the lower bits, so K minus one through J are generating, then we're going to have a carry out for sure. And then in this case here, if both of them are propagating, then we can say that we will over the entire range propagate if both the most significant range of bits, so I through K, and the least significant range of bits, so K minus one to J, are propagating. And so the ideas introduced in this video are the ideas fundamental to faster adders such as the carry look ahead and parallel prefix adders.